Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to create these six micro interactions that will make your Divi site more enjoyable. As you can see, it, this brings a bit of excitement to this design. So in this video, I'll be showing you step by step how we managed to create this. So without wasting a lot of time, let's get started. In this tutorial, in order for us to achieve the micro interactions, we're going to need a lot of CSS code. So what I'll do is if you want to follow along, I will link the article in the show notes below. So let's get started and let's create our first type of micro interactions. So I'm going to create a new page, brand new page. So I've called mine micro, but you can call your page anything you want. So I'm going to go into the visual builder because I prefer using the visual builder. So I'm going to go ahead and click on use visual builder. So first off, what I need to do here is to add some columns. So we're going to use three and we are going to use blurbs in each of these columns. So I'm going to click the plus button and I'm just going to click on this blurb. Okay. So the first thing you want to do here is to add your title. So I'm just going to call mine blurb uh, for the URL. I'm just going to add a blank URL and I'm also going to go ahead here and select use icon. So here on the icons, you can use any icon that you like, but for now I'm just going to use, choose a specific one because of the animation that we're going to use throughout this. So I'm going to choose this for my icon and then icon color. I'm going to paste uh, our color here for the icon. And then we're going to scroll all the way down here and add some content. So I'm going to paste my code in my content in here, and then I'm just going to make sure that it's centered. And then finally, you want to make sure that you don't add any animation on this icon because we're going to add our CSS code to do the animation. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on no animation. So once we're happy with that, uh, we can go ahead and save. But if you want to make a few customizations, you can always go into the design mode here. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and save. To make things quicker, we are going to need two more blurbs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this twice and then just drag this into position. So I'm going to click here, drag that into position, drag this into position. And then I'm going to go in and change my icon. So I'm going to click the gear icon for the settings. And then I'm going to come over here and select my next icon. So here I'm going to need a trash can. So I'm going to select it here. Go ahead and save. And then finally, we're going to need the heart for this one. So I'm just going to quickly search for the heart. And here it is. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and save changes. So now the next thing we're going to do is to add some CSS classes. So we're going to come over here and go into the setting one more time and go into the CSS tab and add our class. So here I'm going to add my rotate class, save that. And then we need to do the rest for uh, these two. Here in the trash can, we're going to go into the custom CSS and our, CS, and our, our CSS class is going to be shake. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then finally, I'm going to go into the settings of uh, the third one and go into the CSS and my class is going to be scale. And then I'm going to go ahead and save. So now that we have everything in place, all we have to do now is to save and exit and then it's time to add our CSS code. So I'm going to come all the way here to the bottom and right here, bottom right, we're going to go ahead and save. Okay, so now that is saved, I'm going to exit the visual builder. Okay, so now I am going to go into my dashboard and we're going to add some CSS code. Come over here to Divi theme options and then we're going to scroll all the way down until we get to custom CSS. And then I'm just going to expand this so I can see where my last code was entered. So I'm going to paste my code in here like that and then click save changes. Okay, so now it's time to see if our changes have taken effect. So I'm going to refresh the page. And now we can see that we have the rotate on this one. We have the shake on that and we have the scale on the third one. Pretty cool. So now in our second example, what we're going to do is we're going to add a pulse animation to a call to action button. So over here on our page, we're going to en uh, enable the visual builder and we're going to add a brand new section. So I'm going to go ahead and click regular. And this time we need a single row and we need a call to action. So I'm just going to search for call to action. And here we have it. So the title here is going to be call to action. And like before, what I'm going to do as well is I'm just going to add a blank link on my button URL and on the button text, we're just going to say, click here, click me like that. So here on the background color, I'm just going to go in and change that to a gray. 
I'm going to change my text color to dark so we can read it against this gray background. So now that we're happy with that, let's go into the design mode. So what we need to do here straight away is to come all the way down here to use custom styles for button. So I'm going to activate that so we can get more options to customize the button. So what I'm going to do here is to add a background color for the button and I'm just going to paste it in here. And for the button text color, we're going to make sure that it's set to white. And then down here, add button icon. We're going to set that to no because that might affect our animation. So now that we're happy with the, the customizations to the button, let's go to the CSS tab and add a CSS class called Pulse. So now with that in place, I'm just going to go ahead now and save this. Now it's time to add the CSS code in our theme customizer. So I'm going to go ahead and save. And then I'm going to go to my dashboard and come over here to Divi theme options. Scroll all the way down until we get to custom CSS and we're going to add our CSS code in there. Okay, now that I've pasted it, I'm going to go ahead and save changes. So in our next example, we're going to add a lift effect on our call to action button. So I'm going to go back into our visual builder and then I'm going to duplicate this. So I'm just going to hit this duplicate button and then we're going to come in into the module settings and we're going to make sure the background color here is set to white. Let's go into the CSS and make sure that um, the CSS class is called lift. So we're going to go back into the design and for this button here, I'm going to scroll all the way down. As you recall, before we didn't have a uh, an icon. So for this one, we are going to add an icon. So I'm going to come over here and search for um, the icon. So here you can see it's set to no. I'm just going to click on yes. And then I'm going to choose this icon right here. The icon color, I need to make sure that it's white so we can see it on this button. So we can see there it's white, which is cool. So now we're going to go ahead and save changes, save the page. I am going to go over here in my theme options and add some more CSS code. So this is the CSS that's going to make all the changes to our lift action. So I'm going to save changes, cancel this for now. And then here we're going to exit the visual builder. So now you can see when I put my mouse over it, we can see that lift, that lift action. In our next example, this is going to be just a continuation of what we just did, what we've just done. And this time we're going to rotate the button icon on hover. So let's go in and enable our visual builder. I'm going to come over here and duplicate this. And I'm going to go into the settings and straight onto my CSS. This time, instead of using the class uh, CSS lift, we are going to use rotate icon. So go ahead and save that. Okay, so now that we've added our CSS, the last thing we're going to do now for this action is to add our CSS code. So I'm going to save this for now. And then I'm going to go into my theme options, scroll all the way down and add my CSS code like that. Click on save changes. Okay, so let's move on to number five, adding micro interactions with images. So what we need to do is to add a new row. So I'm just going to click on this and add a three column row. And for this, we're going to use images. So I am just going to search for an image module, click on image, and then I'm going to click on upload. Now my image is in my download folder. So I'm going to go ahead and click on upload files, select files, and then go to in fact, I'm already in my download, so I'm just going to double click my image and I'm going to click upload an image. OK, so here what's important is we need to make sure that opening light box is activated. So that's it. Yes, that's good. And then finally, over here with the custom CSS, you just need to make sure that you add a CSS class of tilt. So once you've done that, let's go ahead and save. So next, what you need to do is to duplicate this twice. So I'm going to do that twice so we can fill in the gap over here where we have those two empty spaces. So I'm just going to drag this into position like that and drag the other one. So that's looking good. I'm going to save and then next we need to add our CSS code. So I'm going to save that. 
exit the visual builder and then now in the new tab i'm going to come over here to the custom css and add my custom css over here click on save changes okay so what i'm going to do now is to refresh the page and let's test and see if it's working so over here on the bottom if i put my mouse over it we can see that it's rotating so that's pretty cool let's add an opposite effect to these images so this time the images are going to start off tilted and shadowed and then when you put your mouse or your mouse over it it's going to straighten up and be returned to normal state so coming back over here what we're going to do is we're going to enable enable the visual builder and then we're going to duplicate this so i'm just going to click on duplicate and what you want to do is to go to each and every one of these and add a new CSS class so I'm just gonna come over here replace the tilt with straight click on save do the uh, do the same to the next one go to the CSS tab replace the class with straight save and then we're gonna do that on the final one and then finally all we need to do is to add our CSS so head over to the theme options and enter your CSS code and save changes so you can see here that uh, we start off with the images tilted and then as soon as we mouse over it, it then goes straight. So pretty much the opposite of what we have here at the top. So in this last example, we're going to add some animation to the input fields on DV's contact form. The purpose of this micro interaction is to aid the user in the process of filling out the important information. So just like before, what I'm going to do is to add a new row. So I'm going to come over here and click this plus button. Uh, this time we're going to go for a single row and we're going to add a contact form. So I'm just going to search for it here. Click on contact form. So what I'm going to do next is to come over here to my row settings. Click on the gear icon and I'm going to come over here to use custom width and I'm going to set that to 600 like that and then I'm going to go ahead and save so next we're going to go back into our module settings and go into the CSS class and make sure that our class is called border left so with that in place I'm going to go ahead and save and then it's time to add our CSS code so at the same place you come over here to your theme your theme options and then scroll all the way down to custom CSS and then you just paste your CSS code and click on save changes. So once you've added your CSS code, you can go ahead and save. And then I'm going to exit the visual builder and then we're going to test and see if this is working. So I'm going to click on exit visual builder, scroll all the way down until I get to my form. And as soon as I put my mouse over here, you can see that we have that um, blue line which shows which shows us where we are if i come over here to name we can see that that's the highlighted one so this is a very good visual aid when someone comes onto your form just to let them know where they are entering their information so there you have it thank you all for watching if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe on our social media platforms by doing so you'll be notified every time we produce a video we are going to be producing more videos similar to what you're seeing today so until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.